All right, welcome back to the Snod Pod with John Snodgrass, your mortgage resource where we're talking real estate, mortgages, and beyond. Um, this is part two uh, with attorney Patrick Hessling, um, who's involved in uh, real estate uh, law and estate planning and, and uh, probate. Um, so, uh, Patrick, welcome back. And Thanks. Um, Thanks for coming on. If you want to hear Patrick's origin story um, about how he got into real estate law and uh, estate planning, go check out episode one or part one. Um, all right. So let's get right into, uh, get into it here. Um, so the next topic I wanted to talk about is, so like I've got customers that come to me and they've got a revocable trust and they're like, hey, John, how do I get my revocable trust kind of working with... Um, my real estate that I own. Sure. And, and so that's, part, I guess, part one, part two, or maybe they're intertwined. You know, why is it important or, or why do it to get your, your title indeed into revocable trust you sure. created? Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, the, uh, so the revocable trust is a tool that is used that is similar to a will with the difference being that you don't have to go through a probate administration when you have a revocable trust. The revocable piece essentially means that it can be changed by the individual who creates the trust or the, the couple that creates, creates the trust during their lifetime. But uh, the main purpose of a revocable trust is to avoid probate. Okay. So if somebody passes away and they own a house mm -hmm. and they don't have a trust or a will, yep. then that would have to go to probate. Or if somebody passes away and they have a will, then uh, their estate would have to pass through probate as well. Just having the will does not mean you avoid probate. And okay. probate is basically making some filings with the court and then getting approval from the court to do some things to administer the estate. Okay. So the trust is a very important tool because it allows individuals to avoid the probate process altogether. Basically, uh, a client or, or a couple comes in and asks me about drafting a trust. We draft the trust document and that document itself would then be used to sell the real estate once you title that piece of real estate in the name of the trust. Okay. So that gets to, to your point about uh, de uh, uh, titling the deed into the name of the trust after you have a trust. You can take the trust itself to the title company. You can show it to your realtor and the property can be sold by the trustee yeah. who has the authority within the trust to sell the property without having to get the court involved. So- Got it. Um, there's a cost savings on the back end with the revocable trust. And there's also a uh, shorter period of time that uh, that there that there would be as opposed to having a will where you have to go through probate and get the authority. If you have the trust, you can handle the, the administration right away. You could literally list the property the day after the individuals who are named in the trust, the day after they pass away, the trustee could list the property. Got it. So there's no, there's no waiting. And kind of in addition to that, so like if there's some monies that get dispersed, mm -hmm. you don't have to let it go through probate. It's just it's going to get dispersed to the the kids. As long as the the uh, source of the monies are also have the trust listed sure. as the yeah. beneficiary. Which is what you would do with the client right. up front. Be like, hey, we're going to get your, your, you know, your brokerage account that has X amount of dollars in it into the revocable trust. I mean, we're right. going through it right now and yeah. this is good that you came in because yeah. I, need, I need to finalize mine and it'll yeah. give me yeah. a kick in the butt. Other benefits of the, the revocable trust. So uh, within the trust, Obviously, you're choosing beneficiaries and you're choosing a trustee and, and probably a backup trustee, you know, and that might change 10 years from now. Maybe your son, who you're on good terms with, who is going to get 50% of your estate, yeah. no longer want him getting 50%. Got it. Um, 
so it can be changed. Um, and there's really been this uh, advent of people utilizing tools to avoid uh, probate altogether. So the trust is one tool. Mm -hmm. Another tool that some people use is what's called a transfer on death deed. Okay. So essentially in Wisconsin back some 15, 17 years ago, the legislature um, allowed for individuals to record a deed for property that they owned that says that when I die, uh, I'm going to leave this property to my two children. Okay. And then essentially when the homeowner passes away, the two kids have to file one other, uh, it's called a termination of decedent's interest to inform the register uh, of deeds that the individual passed away. And that would effectuate uh, the legitimacy of the transfer on death deed that was filed by the homeowner. So, okay. Um, so is this in lieu? It, it's an it's an it's another trust. way to avoid probate. Another, so so you don't necessarily have to have the revocable trust. You could do the transfer. You could do exactly. Yeah. It's another option. The but there's more benefits to the trust, is there not? Yeah. the 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 benefits to the trust are that you can specify. Um, you know, let's let's say you have four kids, yeah, and you want to give them twenty five percent each yeah. instead of leaving them one fourth of the house. Uh huh. You could say in your trust, my trustee is to sell the house, yeah, and then the proceeds are to be split twenty five percent to Got each it. of the four. The transfer on death deed, you have to actually leave the property yeah. to whoever you want to leave it to. Yeah, and and the thing with estate planning that is important to realize is that it's not a one size fits all. Yeah. It, an est a certain estate plan for one individual might be different than an estate plan for another individual. Um, so you really have to look at things on a case by case basis. Okay. Kind of getting into the discussion about transfer on death deeds and revocable trusts. I, it had kind of an interesting story. I had a client who came to me. He had a previous attorney do a transfer on death deed for a valuable piece of real estate in the Milwaukee area. Okay. And that attorney uh, did the transfer on death deed whereby dad left a one-fifth interest to his five children upon him dying. Okay. Which is something I wouldn't do <laughs> because that can be very complicated. Now you've got right. you get, uh, five individuals who own one piece of real estate. Yeah. Okay. To further complicate matters, um, one of the five post deceased dad. So when the transfer essentially, when when they when they when the family went when the uh, four kids went to try to sell their 20% interest. Yeah. They also, somebody also had to account for that 20% interest of the child who post deceased dad. Yeah. And so that meant there had to be an estate opened on that. And the, the gist of it was that you had the four kids and then the estate had another eight beneficiaries. So really you had effectively 12 individuals yeah. who really had some type of financial or legal interest in this property. And it was when it, it if was, it would, if it would, had it been done, if it was in a trust, yeah. the trustee could have sold the property, yeah, received the proceeds and distributed them in accordance with what his wishes were. So, so that's just kind of an example of, it, 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 it might make the transfer on death deed sound poor, but yeah, um, it's an example where really a specific estate plan for that individual would have been better utilizing the transfer. trust. Yeah. The transfer on death deed is really something that that really more, show, more so should be used if there's a piece of real estate you want to leave to one individual, maybe two. Okay. You when get beyond more. that, it really convolutes things. The, the, and The trust is the way to go. Because that, that just sounds like a mess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was a mess to deal. But yeah. 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 So long story short is, hey, when you're thinking about estate planning, you know, call attorney Patrick Hessling. He can help you with it um, as he's helping with 
me through it right now. And obviously there's, there's, there's benefits, yeah. um, to get your title and the deed in, into the revocable trust once you have it. Yeah. Um, anything else that you wanted to add on? Uh, not really. I think, okay. yeah, just the, the point that, um, you know, if you have to go through a probate process, you, most people have to hire an attorney. Yeah. You're talking thousands of dollars. Right, right. And so that avoids that process altogether. It might be a little bit more upfront cost to do a revocable trust as opposed to a will. Okay. But in the long run, it's it's beneficial for the family and um, the savings in the long run are much more substantial. Got it. Uh, and and that, that's why it's a, it's a great estate planning tool to use. It, can you just remind me, because I know we're doing you know, the, we're doing the revocable trust for me, but then we're doing like a will. Yeah. Yeah. At, at the point. same time. Right? Yeah. That's a good point. So because, because we're working through, Hey, who gets my kids if I die? That, that so. that's a good point. Yeah. And, uh, it's called a pour over will when you do a will in conjunction with a revocable trust. So the pour over will would be a backup to catch any potential assets that you forgot to title in the name of your trust. Got it, like a retirement account or a broker well, account? Well, no, or... no, more so. Typically we see it when, when somebody, let's say somebody does a trust in 2023 uh -huh. and they own a property in Greenfield. Yeah. And they title the deed in the name of the trust for the property in Greenfield. Let's say 10 years later, they sell the Greenfield property uh -huh. and purchase a property in Franklin but they forget to title the Franklin property in the name of the trust. Ah, okay. What your pour over will would do then uh -huh. is your pour over will would direct that, that, that it was your intention for the Franklin property to pass through your trust. Okay. So that's what a pour over will does. It kind of catches what you forgot to title yeah. uh, in the name of your trust. And it's all, it's all, uh, you want to have these extra pieces. I, I, I you know, I, I don't think we have enough time for yeah, the yeah, depth yeah. to it now, but there's extra pieces that are there to make sure that it's a smooth estate plan that's utilized once you and or your wife pass. So we'll, we'll wrap up this episode. We'll, we'll if you, if you can stick around for one more, there was a couple yeah, other things, sure. but to kind of, it, it sounds like, like for me, I'm doing not only the trust and the will, would you say? When somebody comes to you for estate planning, are they doing them in conjunction or yeah. is it sometimes absolutely. most of the time or all the time? Or? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. You want to have the pour over will, you yeah. have a trust. You definitely want to have the that pour over. to reference the um, revocable trust. There's also power of attorney documents that go with okay. that too, but that's- All right. Get, they'll get into it when they call you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Exactly. All right. We'll call Patrick Hesslin, attorney. Um do you want to give your sure. phone number and stuff again? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm on, uh, I'm on 85th and Forest Home in Greenfield. Our office number is 414-448-7250. We got a website too, hesslinglawoffice.com. Check right. us out. All right. Thanks, yeah. Patrick. Um, and if you ever need to get a hold of Patrick, just, you know, check in with me. Uh, you guys know my number and email and I'll, I'll get you in touch uh, with Patrick. But Thank you for uh, listening and watching uh, The Snod Pod with your mortgage resource, John Snodgrass, where we're talking real estate, mortgages, and beyond. Thanks for listening and watching.